uh, invite uh, Professor Knut Engeldel uh, from Norway. He's a psychiatry of old age in the University of Oslo, and he's going to share with us some of the effects of the Norwegian uh, dementia plan. You're very welcome. Uh, thanks of all of being invited to this conference. It has been a great pleasure for me. Uh, secondly, I have to apologize for my broken English. If you don't understand, please ask questions. However, I have to add that broken English is the most spoken language in the world today. <laughs> Uh, this is Norway. It's a huge country with few inhabitants, only five millions. Uh, most of them live in the south, uh, nearby Oslo. If you see, here is Oslo. And if you draw a circle of 100 kilometers around Oslo, half of the population will live in this area. Uh, up north, the population is very sparse. This uh, gives us some challenges in um, giving services to elderly people and to persons with dementia at any age. Um, to understand my presentation, I have to inform you about how uh, health services are organized in Norway. Uh, we have four legislation that secure the money for health and social care. It is a municipal health care act and a social care act in municipal. This is the Hospital Act, and it's the um, Insurance Act that cover every Norwegian. Um, so you can have uh, health services for free. Um, the government is directly responsible for running all the hospitals. So all the hospitals in Norway are governmental. As far as I know, we only have two or three private hospitals, and that is in surgery, in, in uh, plastic surgery. Otherwise, everything is public. And when it's come to uh, services for elderly, services for disabled, of any kind, services for persons with dementia, this is a responsibility for the municipalities. Um, persons with dementia don't stay in hospital. They go to hospital if they have acutely comorbid disorder, and then they're discharged back to, to the um, municipality. And we have um, in-home nursing service around the clock in all communities in Norway. So, so you have the possibility to have help uh, day and night. Um, now to the dementia plan. Um, we competed with the France, French people to be the first one to launch a governmental plan. <laughs> so we have to act very fast. I'd, don't know if we are the first or the second. Um, we can argue about that later on. But in 2006, the Ministry of Health and Care Services, we don't have a Ministry of Social Care. We have a Ministry of Health and Care Services. This is a combined ministry. They proposed that we should launch a dementia plan, and all political parties supported this proposal. And then they instructed the civil servants in the Director of Health Affairs to make a strategy plan, a plan which is very similar to what we heard today by Suzanne this morning. Uh, what do we know about dementia? What do we know about good clinical practice? What do we know about good services? And draw against this report, uh, the Ministry of Health very quickly, within three months, uh, wrote the dementia plan. It's a strategy plan and it's an action plan. And this was launched late in the autumn of 2007. Uh, these are the two uh, documents. Uh, the um, report on best clinical practices uh, in Norwegian only. It's just a document of 150 pages with good references, but the plan is also in English, so you can uh, go into the internet of the Norwegian government and you can have the Norwegian plan in English. It's a short plan, 25 pages. 
so what's in this plan? Um, there is one overall aim, one single overall aim, and that is to increase the knowledge about dementia in the society as a whole, the whole Norwegian society, for ordinary people, for professional caregivers, for family caregivers, for patients. Everyone should know more about dementia. That's the overall. But the plan also contains two specific uh, aims. And one is to uh, develop a variety of daycare programs. And this is focus number one. Should only be not one model, should be different models how to have daycare centers in over 430 communities. And the second goal uh, was made on the slogan, small is beautiful. That is to create um, living condition in nursing home, group livings, other housings for persons with dementia specially designed for their disabilities. And the units should not be bigger than six to 10 uh, persons in each unit at all levels. And this is also the case for the design die care centers for persons with dementia, small is beautiful, not more than 10 persons a day. And then there was much more specific goals. Uh, these are, are the really ambitious goals. Within 2015, this started, as I said, 2007, but it actually didn't start before 2008. So within seven years, every community, every municipality, 430, shall, not shall make effort to, but a shall. I think this is the correct English word they shall have a dementia team. And what's the dementia team? A dementia team is a care management team. It's a team of experts in dementia that should support the GPs, the family doctors, in assessing the patient, in making a care plan, in follow up the patient and the families. Um, the dementia team uh, normally um, is a nurse, a dementia nurse, a nurse with special education in dementia, and in addition, one other person. Uh, idly, it could be an occupational therapist, to my mind, but not every municipality has an occupational therapist. OTs are very useful persons. You can use them for everything. <laughs> we say in Norway, this is a kind of potatoes. Uh, some of this team collaborate very closely with the family doctors of the patient. In some municipalities, they have a consultant GP with special knowledge and skill in dementia. And I can tell you, those teams work the best. So if there's one doctor, one GP in the municipalities with really interest in dementia and he support the nurse and the OT or two nurses making this team, this is excellent teams. Secondly, in 2015, there should be a daycare center in every municipality. 2015, there should be an educational program in every municipality for family caregivers. We call this a carer school. <laughs> We have developed a model I will show you afterwards. And this will also consist of um, groups that can discuss common problems, support groups. And these care school and support groups is normally a collaboration between the Alzheimer Society of Norway and civil servants in the municipality. This is the model. Uh, further on, there should be 10,000 more person working with care for person with dementia in the community. And that should be an educational program to the professional caregivers. The goal is that 6,000 persons should have been in a program within 2015. There should also be more education at all level 
into the university, to the college, uh, for the doctors, for the psychologists, for the nurses, and so on. And lastly, uh, there was a campaign uh, two years ago. So to achieve these goals, um, the civil servants in the ministry um, instructed the civil servants and the director of health to carry out various measures. And they were asked to develop new services, to develop methods in how to implement services, and it was asked to evaluate the new services. I've been into research for 30 years. I've been into implementation of new services for 30 years. And guess, it's much easier to do research and to implement new services. I think Alistair told about that before lunch. It's so difficult. You can show personal the evidence, why you will, 100 reasons for why you should do new services, but still they would like to do as they used to do. Um, I am the research director of a rather used organization in Norway. Uh, it's called the Norwegian Center for Aging and Health. It's, we are helping out the directorate by achieving these goals. Uh, my organization started as a service development center for dementia 15 years ago. Then we were seven person. Today we are 60 person. Uh, but now we also are a center for not only for dementia, also for all the psychiatry, for aging in um, people with learning disability, aging with persons with functional disability that I had in early in life, and also in geriatrics. And we have four priority areas. We should give advice and support all kind of health personnel in specialist health service and in primary health service. We should implement new services. We should develop new services. We should create um, educational material. So we have a publishing house. And we should organize courses, um, educational program of all kinds. And then we do research on the top of that. Um, the directorate um, decided uh, we should carry out 10 programs. And my organization are involved in f seven of these programs. The seven first programs uh, we work with these programs. Um, for each program, there's allocated about 600,000 euros for the three years period just to develop the methodology and to start the implementation. And we use the kind of the same methodology for all the programs. We went to those persons in Norway who knew about how to do things. So we went to the Alzheimer's Society and asked them, what do you think that the carers, the family carers, you know about dementia? What should be the themes, the topics for the carer school? You tell us, and we will do the job. But you have to work together with us. We went to GPs. We went to dementia nurses that we knew um, had dementia team before this program started and tell, told them, asked them, how should we do this? Will you teach other dementia team, coming dementia team? So we had a group of 25 municipalities that was kind of models. And then we arranged courses, seminars for the other municipalities so that you listen to their colleagues. So we didn't tell them what to do. So, yes, and then the evaluation is, uh, uh, is a very good one. We have counted all the services that existed in Norway in the communities in 2007. We have did a new counting in 2011, and there will be a third wave in 2015 and we have a 100 response rate. We don't give up. <laughs> if you only have 70 response rate by mail, then we use the phone. On Saturday, on Sunday, day and night, we won't answer. <laughs> so we have a 100% response. 
they don't get rid of us. Uh, some example, um, dementia team and how to assess and diagnose dementia in Norway. We think this should be done both in special health care and in primary health care. It should not only be one or the other. I come back to this. This is uh, the cause of dementia. Um, we think that our goal is that people with a very mild degree of dementia, say MMSC score of 26, 27, 25, younger person with any degree of dementia, a typical cases should be assessed in specialist health care in memory clinics. All the other patients that have clear symptoms and signs of dementia should be assessed and diagnosed in primary health care. That's our goal. I'm going back. For the assessment of those with, I would say, clear signs and symptoms of dementia, this could be a job for the dementia team together with the GPs. And the other one are for the memory clinics. There are about a bit more than 20 memory clinics in Norway. Half of them are in geriatric medicine, half in only psychiatry, one in neurology, only one. 15 of those memory clinic uh, has a registry, a common registry for research purposes using the same protocol for the assessment. And we want to have this for all the others as well. Uh, we have developed, a, I would say, a kind of recipe how to assess and diagnose dementia in primary health care. Because the DP said, what should I do? I don't know what to do. So some say, oh yes, I know about the MMSC test. I can do the MMSC test. And we say, that's not enough. You should do a broad assessment to have the person's needs, the family needs, not only an MMSC score. That's not enough. So we made a kind of recipe. There is a guide, there's a booklet with a guide what to do, how to do it. And then there are checklist scales that can choose among. You can choose these scales, you can use your checklist. Uh, if you have a score so and so, that's mean so and so. So that's what we do. And we tell the GPs exactly in which cases as you refer to the CT or MRI, which blood test as you do, how often does you follow up the patient and the family every six months. And we tell the dementia team exactly the same. This is very structured. And we have made a handbook a short handbook, 30 pages, everyone can read 30 pages, how to set up a dementia team, what should you think about, what should you do, how should you run the dementia team, how should you have the cooperation with the family doctor. And this is how we think it should work. Um, this is the team, this is the family, this is the DP. Um, the, the dementia team is a low threshold service. Everyone in the municipality can give the team a phone call. Could be the family, could be the DP, could be anyone, a nurse, a district nurse, anyone could just call. Then the team will contact the GP by phone call and say, hey, one of your patients is reported to have a suspected dementia. Would you ask us to start an assessment. So we call the family, and mostly GPs are happy about this. They say, yes, of course, because the team do the job. Then I contact the family and ask, it's okay if you come to your house and visit you, and we have a first talk. And then there will be one or two home visit, and they start the assessment. Normally, the team will also do the MMSE test, the clock test, uh, CDR rating, they will judge depression with Cornell scale, care or stress, and so on. And then they send a report to the GP and ask for a consultation. And the GP has to appoint two consultations, one 20 minutes and one 40 minutes. In the first session, he do the physical exam. In the second session, he talk with the family and the patient. 
if they don't agree about diagnosis, uh, um, a referral is sent to a memory clinic for help. If not, they do the diagnosis themselves, write a report, contact the family, inform about the diagnosis, the care plan, and the team follow the family up over time. Okay. This is a model. So how it's how it is today. Well, we had already in 2007, as we started, 99 such team in our municipalities. Uh, during these four years, it has increased to 243. So there's a 150% increase. But still, we have to introduce this um, model to 200 more municipalities. So there's a way to go. But we have four years now, three years into 2015. So you have to work hard. Uh, yeah, you see, most cases, the nurse in the team, increasing number of GTPs are now also member of the team, not only a collaborator. And we are very happy about that. We have some special courses for the GPs. Only GPs are allowed to come into these dementia courses of two days. If you put in other people that don't want to come, only GPs and they credit for the course as uh, education in geriatric medicine, and then they come. Uh, daycare centers, um, we also had some daycare centers before 2007 designed for persons with dementia. There was 133 in 2011, it's an increase to 180. And as Suzanne told you, 30 municipalities have special designed daycare center for a person below 65 years with the dementia disorders. And this number is also increasing. 14% of all daycare centers are on farms. They are, so to speak, outdoors daycare centers. Very popular on the countryside. Very popular, especially for men. Younger men with a dementia disorder that are used to work in a field with cows, now they come to work in the daycare center. The government is not um, satisfied with the increase. So from the last three weeks, from 2012, they give grants for every municipality that want to set up a daycare center. They have grants to set up the center. They will cover about half of the cost for the, to run the centers. And the goal is to have 5,000 new person in a daycare uh, program. So I hope with this additional money, uh, we will succeed. Um, which kind of municipality? Yeah, you see the, the large municipalities, those with in more than 25,000 inhabitants, that's large in Norway. Nearly all uh, municipalities have daycare centers. They increase in those between 3,000 and 25,000. The smaller one, we cannot expect them a large increase. We have municipalities with 500 inhabitants that have one or two persons with dementia, so, so they don't need a daycare center. So we can achieve this goal as every should have one. Then we should put in some activities in the center. This is not only respite care for the, for the family. So you should have indoor activities, you should have outdoor activities, and of course these days and on a farm are beautiful. I've been visited some of them, it's real nice. So when I suffer from dementia, that's me. <laughs> that's my favorite hobby, to have a kitchen garden. What about the special care units in nursing homes and in group living facilities? Uh, as you can see, about half of all persons with a clear-cut dementia disorder. In these 70,000 that we expect to have are not those with a very mild degree of dementia included. They're not included in this number. So about half of all persons with dementia uh, are cared for in a nursing home. There have been a very um, slow decrease from 2007 to 11, and if you see the bottom line, um, 
how many of the beds are specially designed for persons with dementia, then the, the largest increase was for 1990, 60, 2007, not during this program. There are very small changes in establishing special care units. This is a special care unit. Uh, this is a nursing home in a small municipality designed for persons with dementia. This municipality, they have two nursing homes. One ordinary nursing home and this one for persons with dementia. It looked like a private house. And this is inside the private house for persons with dementia. Each resident uh, has his own room and there are some uh, common rooms. Uh, these are how the furniture look like in some of these special care units. Uh, a kind of old fashioned furniture and not like young people who prefer today. And this is from one garden, therapeutic garden, up in the north, where they have snow half of the year, but still they have a garden. Uh, another initiative has been to introduce person-centered care. Uh, the idea of Tom Kitwood uh, is very strong in Norway. His philosophy is very strong. Every nurse dealing with persons with dementia in Norway have heard about Tom Kitwood. And I will see they also heard about Don Brucker. <laughs> we had, had a program, it's just finalized this year, uh, to introduce um, the DCM, Dementia Care Map, as a method to improve the quality of care. We have introduced the Marta Mio method, where you use a film also to introduce the quality of care. And above all, we introduced the WIPS framework. Do you know this? Uh, this is Don Brucker's ID. This is based on the dementia care map. It's based on Tom Kitbird, but it's, it's much easier to perform in a nursing home. You don't need educated instructors like you do with dementia care mapping. I cannot tell you any results so far, but uh, this is ongoing project to improve person-centered care in all nursing homes in Norway. And we also have a program for younger persons with dementia. This is also ongoing. And we have looked at the possibilities, how to, what we should recommend in our handbook. And I can assure you that the recommendation are young people should be assessed in memory clinics, follow up in memory clinics. We should design more daycare center designed for younger people because they have other interests. They're like me. They are fit for fight. They can do something what elderly people cannot do. They can travel. They can work. And also, we have some special um, nursing homes now for younger people with dementia. Uh, in Oslo, we have one. And we also examine the needs of the spouses and the children. And last year, we set up um, a weekend course for children or persons with dementia. And this was very successful, and we repeat this this year. Um, we have money from um, the Alzheimer's Society, and we do this together with the Alzheimer's Society, and invite 20 youngsters to a hotel from Friday to Sunday, uh, and educate them about dementia, and we discuss common problems, and have some fun, of course, playing music and dance, and uh, what youngsters used to do. Uh, Kira School, yes, I will hurry up. Uh, these are one of the big success. Before 2007, there was hardly any educational program for family caregivers. Then we, I say luckily, we have a nurse. She created this Kira School in the voluntary organization uh, from the church, and it was so successful that we decided we go for this model. It's a very structured model. It should be a collaboration between community and Alzheimer or another voluntary organization. Um, it is a program for six or eight weeks. Um, they come together once a week for three hours. There's a lecture of a specific teams, 
the coffee, some cookies, and then a discussion. Theme could be, for instance, challenging behavior, could be ethical issues. Um, from nothing, there's no 162 municipalities has such a school. And again, the government give money for every municipality that will set up a school that have, within one week, they have 3,000 euros. Go for it. And the most successful of everything is the educational program. We have created in what we call an ABC dementia. It's in the two files. 25 booklets, 25 DVD for person that are not fond of reading, so they can listen to the text. This is a group learning program in the workplace. So if you work in a nursing home, nurses, nurses said, person without education come together every second week to have either listen to the DVD or read the text and sit down for two hours and discuss. Very powerful. Twice a year, they come together to a big conference like this. Uh, and then we have good lecturers, a lot of good coffee and, and lunch and everything. And I come enormous with people. Uh, as I made this preparation, there were 11,000 students in this program. Uh, I was learned yesterday, there's now 12,000. Uh, every week there come a new student into this program. So this is very successful. Besides, we do a lot of courses for all kinds of personnel about dementia every year. Research? Well, there are no earmarked money for dementia research in Norway yet. There are money for research, but not a program for research in dementia. I have to hurry up. Success factor, what is cheap, easy to administer, is successful easy to implement. So the care and school and educational program, program which doesn't cost much, the government give grants, easy to administer, huge success. Limited success, dementia team. I have expected there would be more, but it, it is a kind of difficult to have the politician in every municipality the GPs in every municipality to go on board with this idea that we should have a special dementia team, should not be part of the, the care for elderly people in general. We like to have a special team for this, not a part of the, of the care for the age team. But we will move on with this. Barriers, well, of course, what costs a lot of money is also difficult to implement. Uh, but now the government can grant for the daycare center. I think we will have a lot more of daycare center in the years to come. So in summary, um, Norway, one of the richest countries in the world, <laughs> have not achieved all the goals with the dementia plan within four years. You cannot buy everything for money, I think. Uh, you should do a lot of efforts to implement the new services that you, you go for. So we will carry on and hope that, my hope is that the dementia team in the municipalities should be the cornerstone for the care service for persons with dementia. They could help the GP with assessment, they could follow up their families, be a care manager, they can establish the care school, they can continue with the educational program for all uh, staff uh, caring for persons with dementia. So then I close and thank you for your attention. Thank you.